was the summer of 2014, and for my son's bar mitzvah present, just like many Jewish parents, we wanted him to bond with the Holy Land. Oh, it worked perhaps too well. My husband had stayed back at the hotel, and our friends, my son and I, had just stopped in a pharmacy. Run! Run to the bomb shelter, sweetie! Please! Please hurry! I didn't hear the sirens at first, but the Israelis did. They're used to hearing these things. We ran to the back of the storeroom. It was a 12 foot by 24 foot windowless bomb shelter. My heart's pounding. Boom! Boom! I hear and feel the percussion of the exploding bombs. I'm trying not to get sick. I look at my 13 year old son and I think I'll never forgive myself if something happens to him. That's an excerpt from a speech I gave to the Orange County Jewish Bar Association. It was the first but not the last time we had to run to a bomb shelter. Our adventure and my transformation is also the subject of my book, Blasted from Complacency, A Journey from Terror to Transformation in Israel. There is no chapter in a parenting book on what to do when a war starts and you're on a family vacation. Think touring extraordinary and sacred sites mixed with cowering in bomb shelters. I'm still trying to get over the Jewish guilt of taking my son to war for his bar mitzvah present. The impact of being human targets helped me understand the plight of Israelis living like this, and it also made me want to work on peace. How Israel is often described on the news is not what I'd seen with my own eyes, and I felt Palestinian parents also preferred their children playing safely in their backyards. The missiles exploded just near enough to blow apart my world as I knew it, forever changing me. And you'd never recognize my life today with what it was like then. I believe I found my life's purpose. Hello, I'm Penny ST, and I'm the host of Peace with Penny. Happy New Year. Today is our first interview of the new year. We hope 2023 will be a year of hope, success, and peace for you. This is a new experience for me. I've talked with and about many Israeli and Palestinian peacemakers on Peace with Penny, but Rami is Gazan. The Gaza that I know intellectually sends bombs against Israel and is where Hamas rules and the Hamas charter or the Covenant of the Islamic Resistance Movement, it states that it rejects all peace talks with the State of Israel and stresses the terrorist organization's commitment to destroy Israel through a long-term holy war or jihad. Gaza in peace talks is set aside as another type of beast that is so difficult, perhaps impossible to deal with. And Rami is a known Gazan peace activist. Isn't that a contradiction in terms? It is time for me to challenge my own biases once again, like I have for other Palestinians. With all of that, hello, welcome, Rami. Welcome, Penny. I'm so happy to be with you. I'm so happy you can be. Before we get into more details of your story, Rami, I wanted to play this clip that you brought us because I think it's a great way to start the new year. Rami supplied us with this positive clip of Israelis, Gazans, Palestinians, Iranians, and Iraqis wishing us all a Shana Torva or Happy New Year. What's up? Happy New Year in advance. It's okay, okay. Hi, my Israeli friend. My name is Shireen. I'm Iranian. I live in Tehran. Uh, I want to wish you a Shana Tova and all the happiness and friendship and all the good things in the world. I love you. Hi, my name is Jan and I wish you everybody... I gotta go, let's go. <laughs> Hi, my name is Yael and I'm from Israel. I wish everybody a happy new year and Shana Tuva. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, we wish you a happy new year. Shana Tuva, Metika. Shana Tuva. Shana Tuva. Hi, my name is Majid. I'm from Iran. I wish to say Happy New Year to all Israelis. Love from Iran. Shana Tova. Uh, hello, my name is Mohammed. I'm from Iraq, Kharkov. I wish you a very happy New Year and year of love and peace. Shana Tova. 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 Shana Tova
שנה טובה. תודה רבה. היי אול מי פרנדס, הפי ניו איר, שנה טובה, היי רמי, מני פיפול היר אין גזה, ווישינג פור יו, הפי ניו איר, הד מני פיפול היר אין גזה, ווישינג פור יו, שנה טובה. This is Juju and Happy New Year, Shana Toba. Hello, my name is Farnoosh from Tehran and uh, Happy New Year, Shana Toba. Shana Toba! Shana Toba! Shana Toba! So I enjoyed that and I hope you did too. Um, of course, yeah, I said wow. <laughs> It's a happy way to begin the new year, hearing from people from all over in many areas that you wouldn't necessarily expect wishing uh, folks in Hebrew a uh, happy new year. We will be speaking with Rami Amman. Rami is a freelance Palestinian journalist and peace activist in the Gaza Strip. In 2010, Rami founded the Gaza Youth Committee. The vision of the Youth Leaders Committee is to develop Palestinian youth, academic and cultural competencies in order to break the siege on the Gaza Strip and liberate the Palestinian youth. The PYC aims to provide support for academic, scientific and cultural programs by cooperating with Palestinian NGOs and international organizations. In 2015, Rami organized video chats between Israelis and Palestinian peace activists in the Gaza Strip in an initiative called Skype with Your Enemy. In April 2020, amid the COVID-19 pandemic, the Gaza Youth Committee held one of its largest video conferences via Zoom with more than 200 participants. Opponents of normalizing relations with Israel were also on the call, resulting in a public uproar which prompted Hamas to arrest Rami and several other call participants. On April 9, 2020, Rami turned himself in to the internal security headquarters in Gaza City. In September 2020, Hamas military prosecutors in Gaza had charged Rami and two other Palestinian peace activists with weakening revolutionary spirit for their role in organizing the April 2020 video call with Israelis. In September 2020, a coalition of 70 NGOs lodged a complaint with the UN working on arbitrary detention. detention regarding the detention of Rami and demanded his release. Let me play this video clip of their complaint. Madam Chair, I deliver this statement on the petition for the release of Rami Amman, filed with your working group by 70 United Nations accredited NGOs, as described in HRC 45 NGO slash 149. Our coalition includes Global Human Rights Defense, Forum Méditerranéen pour la Promotion des Droits des Citoyens, the Japanese Association for the Right to Freedom of Speech, and 67 other NGOs from Bangladesh, Brazil, Canada, France, Ghana, India, Morocco, the Netherlands, Nigeria, Pakistan, Switzerland, and other countries. Palestinian peace activist Rami Aman was arrested by Hamas on April 9th. His crime, organizing a Zoom video call between Israeli and Palestinian peace activists. He has been arbitrarily detained in Gaza for 165 days. in flagrant violation of international law. In May, Amnesty International recognized Rami Aman as a prisoner of conscience. Our complaint demonstrates how the due process rights of Mr. Aman are being egregiously violated. He has not yet been charged and never had an opportunity to challenge his detention in court in breach of Article 14 of the ICCPR. The detention of Rami Aman constitutes an arbitrary deprivation of liberty on multiple grounds. Ms. Toomey, UN treaty bodies have held the Palestinian Authority responsible for Hamas activity in Gaza. 
will the working group on arbitrary detention hold both of them accountable? In October 2020, the permanent military court in Gaza issued a decision to release Rami and two other persons who were detained. Rami had been imprisoned and tortured for a total of eight months. He's had to pay a much higher price to be a peace activist, and many consider Rami a hero. So let's get back to your story, Rami. It's so interesting and heartbreaking at times. Uh, what was your intention when you established the Gaza Youth Committee? Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm so proud to be your first guest. And uh, <laughs> this year, for me, it means a lot. <laughs> and uh, that will give me more power yani, to continue. When you start this year with me, it's something will be so great to me. The reason that uh, pushed me to uh, establish the committee in that time, in, in the last of uh, 2009, I was uh, a manager of Russia Today, the Arabic channel in Gaza Strip, and at the same time working with Russia Today, the English channel. Uh, and after the Israeli operation over Gaza at that time, 1,400 killed, uh, Hamas controlling Gaza, and uh, Abu Mazen and Fatah in, in, in West Bank, and I'm independent. Um, and I looked at the future in that time and, and, and I told myself that I will be the next victim and all of these people will be the price and Hamas will stay forever. Uh, in that time, Abu Mazen and Fatih were thinking about uh, leave Hamas sometimes. Hamas will <laughs> call us to come and <laughs> return to Gaza and of course that uh, didn't happen. Uh, so I, I uh, and in that time, uh, I received like a request from the security asking about uh, my work in the media, my partners, and I told them that I'm not Fatah, I'm not uh, uh, relating for any party, I am independent. Hamas in 2007 and 2008, not like Hamas 2020, 2023. Uh, so I told myself that we need uh, an independent movement from this generation who can find uh, a decision maker or the leaders uh, for all of the Palestinians, not just for a specific type from this community, because in Gaza Strip and most of West Bank, if you are Fatah, you will just benefit from Fatah. If you are Hamas, you will benefit from Hamas. It's like this. And for independent people, it's nothing. It's nothing. And Hamas, in that time, trying to change the culture of the community by pushing their ideas and their agendas in our school, in our community, between our families, inside the, uh, every sector in Gaza Strip. Uh, I started to, to look at my friends, to look at my family. Uh, I'm a member in YMCA, Young Men Christian Association in Gaza, and mm -hmm. most of my friends in Gaza, they are Christians. Uh, so I am started from them and from my friends, and I told my friends that let's make something, let's do uh, any effort can help us in empower our relations and 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 and, and find more uh, yeah any ways to uh, help these people to help ourselves to to be a decision maker in the future away from what is happening around Israel killing us Hamas killing us Abu Mazen ignoring us. Nobody will help us, just ourselves. And uh, in that meeting, we were 20, 25 participants. Until now, you, know, you can say that Rami and five or six uh, yeah, members from that, uh, that, that, that meeting in, 20, in 2009, December 2009, yeah. And we started in, 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 in the, after that too make some meetings with the NGOs there, 
to uh, tell them that we can cooperate in some voluntary work. Our our main our main idea was to uh, think about uh, think about how we can feed our movement financially. So mm -hmm. we refused to uh, write a proposal and visit any NGO there and tell them that we need to create a group or something. No, uh, we thought like. Uh, if we started from ourselves, we can host our idea. And yes, I used my uh, personal money that I saved from my work in the media. I worked in the media from 2005 until 2010. Yeah. So five years, and I made good money in, in that time. And uh, uh, yeah, we made many great initiatives with many NGOs, and we he, like organized many visits for the Ministry of Education, Ministry of uh, Interior, Ministry of uh, Culture. Tell them that we are a group of young people from different sectors, Christians and Muslims, uh, boys and girls. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, How old were the kids? Uh, the kids? To start the kindergarten, yani. you can say four years. Five years. They were four or five years old. Yeah, we have we have some talented Jenny <laughs> kids. Just you can speak with four years old in God. It's not a culture like Janet. It's not a culture like Berlin. The kid there in Gaza, <laughs> through the, the 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 violence, through the bloody pictures, through the missiles, it wasn't his fault to be there. Yeah, true, true, true. So you were born in Kuwait and came to Gaza when you were 10. Why Why did your parents go there? My father is a Palestinian from Gaza. Uh, and in that time, he was in the Gulf in 16, after 1967 war. And uh, he was in, and then he moved to Kuwait, from Gaza to Egypt, and then Kuwait, and then he traveled with his friend to Algeria, and then he met my mom. So it was a love story between my father and my mother. Yeah. And then they decided to create a family. My father, my mother went with my father to Kuwait, and then traveled again to uh, meet her family in Algeria. She was pregnant with me. I was the second kid. Mm -hmm. I have a big sister called Dalia. And then I was born in Algeria. And then started my first years until uh, yani my first 11 years were in Kuwait. Between Kuwait and Egypt and uh, yani Gaza traveling sometimes, yani some weeks, but most of the years in Kuwait. So mm -hmm. I educated very well in 18. And uh, I arrived together with my family after the Iraqi occupation over Kuwait. The cultural uh, uh, يعني, it changed there in Kuwait against the Palestinians. In that time, Yasser Arafat standed with Saddam Hussein. Uh, and of course, uh, all of the Palestinians in Kuwait in that time suffered from this decision because the Kuwaitis started to Yani hate us, Yani, and they changed their opinions about us. Yani, although that Kuwaitis, Yani, they are all the time with us. <laughs> yani, they fed us with money and many things. And they yes. moved to Gaza before the Oslo Agreement, 1992. I know that you told me that when you were young, you threw rocks at the Israeli soldiers. I've always wondered, I mean, that happens quite a lot from Gaza. I was, what are you trying to accomplish? What were you trying to accomplish by doing that? In that time, I came from Kuwait, mm -hmm. uh, like any Palestinian kid. Right. Feeding by of the Arabic songs and the yes. videos of Israeli soldiers kicking the yeah. uh, Palestinian boys 
uh, in, in Ramallah and in Gaza also. Gaza right. and that they were under occupation. Israeli soldiers in that uh, in the streets. I'm like any Palestinian kid. Yeah. Just my my second day in Gaza, I was with some young people mm-hmm. and the boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, launching small rocks for me. It was like I'm liberating uh, my country. I'm mm-hmm. against uh, these soldiers. Uh, and uh, this is our way to express our uh, reaction. Oh, so so that, that, that was your way to defend your country is why you were doing it? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, I just I just always wondered exactly what your what what the kids who do that are trying to accomplish. Okay, great. I mean, not great, but <laughs> thanks for explaining it. Um, so at the YMCA, it's it's interesting because I know in Jerusalem the YMCA is a real big deal there too. When you were fourteen, you were going there. What was that like? For me, YMCA was like the right way to continue my life with a small anything like what I was in Kuwait. It's a good community, good families, not covering their hairs, not like the whole communities in the whole community in Gaza. Most of them thinking in Islamic way. Yes, my father is a Muslim, and he ha- he going to Hajj three times, and my mother also. But uh, Islam for us just respect all. That's it, and we have all good relations with all. And I found my family in Gaza. They have good relations with the Christians' family. So mm-hmm. I just continue our reputation among family. What was uh, Gaza? Sorry. Sorry. What was Gaza like then? Nothing was in Gaza in that time. Not all the you can't find TVs in all the houses. No phones. Uh, no supermarkets. Just small markets. Uh, no good streets. Old cars. Uh, old schools. Schools built in '67. After '67. 30 years in that time and I came from Kuwait <laughs> mm-hmm. and Kuwait it was, was, a, very was, it was Kuwait, a very big gap yeah so Kuwait was how was it different than Gaza it's very modern yeah golf uh, just to check the golf in 18 19 good schools good teachers good organizations good clubs I came from Kuwait like watching the championships, the World Cup, my first World Cup. I uh, I watched it in the TV with my mother in 1986. I was five years old. Yeah. So this kind of following for the sport yeah, gave to me many information and lo- the knowledge about the countries, uh-huh. about the people, about uh-huh. the capital of uh, these countries, understanding more, following the team. I love Argentina, I love Maradona, I love, I'm following America in 1994, their first World Cup. Yeah, so it was Saudi very, Arena, it was Saudi very... Arena and other and Kopi Jones. <laughs> so when you moved there, it was very backward compared nothing, to what you were used nothing. to. Nothing, I was asking my family there how I just followed the Premier League and Italian and join. I was thinking like Fatih and Hamas, they are uh, football teams. Yeah. Not movement. So, what is Gaza like today? Gaza, it's very modern now, like any other community. But people don't have money, nothing to do. Hamas control everything, put many taxes. Uh, also, Israel controlled the system in Gaza Strip. So, and Egypt also, right? 
Egypt also, yeah, but Egypt uh, now uh, Rafa High Crossing already yani, open all the time. Uh, and the traveling now, it's not hard like the bus. It was the siege over Gaza, but not because of the Egyptians, because of, yani, you can say, because of the problems between Palestinian Authority and Hamas movement. When Hamas movement controlled Gaza in 2007, they kicked out the Palestinian Authority and the European delegation left the uh, crossing. Egypt, of course, closed from their side, but in that time, Hosni Mubarak ordered to find the solutions for the people. It was a very big siege in that time, not over Hamas like the Americans like George W. Bush and the, 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 the Israeli Prime Minister, I, I forget in the time, maybe Walmart or something, said that we re rejected the, the, the Palestinian election, we will not recognize Hamas, we will build the siege over Gaza, the siege built over the people. That's it. Now, you can <laughs> look at Hamas. <laughs> what kind of siege they built over Hamas? I've been often told that Gaza is like an open-air prison. Why is it described that way? Yeah, it's like that. When they well, released on me from the jail, when they released on me from the jail in 2020, in October 2020, uh, uh, I tried to travel to organize a meeting with the US APC in Jerusalem, and I had a permit, and Hamas rejected my traveling. They, they, they denied my traveling because of nothing. And some calls and orders came from Hamas office outside. Because in that time, they were afraid if Rami will get outside, they will speak and talk about what happened. But for me, I thought that it's a big jail now. So it's Hamas won't let people travel? Yeah, Hamas controlled that. Okay, and what made you for want to work a, For both the crossings, for both the cro crossings with Israel, Ares, mm -hmm. or with uh, Egypt, Rafa. What made you want to work on peace? After, after Oslo Agreement in 1993, 1994, with my participation in YMCA, mm -hmm. I had a very amazing workshops about the summer camps and communication skills and leadership skills and how we can organize summer camps for the kids from different ages. Uh, it was a good civil society at that time, and that because Europe and the Americans started to uh, send a lot of money to build the ministers, the NGOs, to make some, pro to make some projects for, 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 for the society there. In Gaza. And through the 90s, 96, 97, in that time, uh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad started to uh, make some uh, explosions inside Israel, buses and something, and put Yasser Arafat, put Yasser Arafat uh, to, to face uh, the Israeli reactions. Why? Most of the people in that time, they said, what? Thousands of uh, people, tell, uh, hundreds of thousands of workers in Gaza in that time, they were, uh, they were working in Israel go to Israel every day, made a lot of money, and we have a good life. Uh, I, yes, I traveled to Egypt to study my uh, university. I, am, I have a bachelor degree in electrical communication engineering, mm. but the second intifada, if you remember, in 2000, mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. in Egypt. The Israelis also uh, attacked some goals in uh, uh, Gaza, cars, a new thing of uh, a new way and a new attitude of uh, of uh, of killing now. For me, I was like, no, that uh, that should not happen. Yani, why? Why it's happened? Why it's happening now? Why? When I back to Gaza and work in the, the journalism and following the Israeli operations in that time in 2009, 1,400 killed. When we started to uh, film the last, uh, the first day after the truce, 
women under the, the ground. For me, I don't talk about any kind of fighting. I'm talking about civilians. Here I'm talking about civilians. So, mm -hmm. And most of them, they are away from this yani, conflict. Some people looking for, 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 for their food, for uh, to, to bring milk for his or her kid. That's it. Yeah. And nobody, yani, nobody made anything. Okay, but in the streets also you can listen to the people that we want peace, we want peace, and I'm a Palestinian from Gaza, and they know very well how the people think inside Gaza. But me, peace doesn't mean that peace, we need peace and you take everything. No. Give me my freedom and I will give you my, my peace. Don't push me in the corner and tell me <laughs> that if it's with good, yani, uh, life for a few years. No, I'm looking for a sustainable life with peace way. And what what made you want to communicate directly with Israelis? Most of the people in Gaza already they are in touch with Israelis. We have hundreds thousands of workers going weekly and daily to Israel to work there to talk and work and meet Israelis. Most of the patients in Gaza are going to get their treatments in Israel with the, by Israeli doctors, <laughs> by their hands. Most of the uh, uh, Palestinian Authority representatives inside Gaza and a lot of journalists inside Gaza and representatives of NGOs inside Gaza, they are in touch with uh, many different categories in Israel. But they are doing that under the table. And why, I am from the why, community in Gaza. Why, it sounds so confusing. If all that's going on, wh why does why do the Hamas leaders maintain their stance that so anti-Israel when the people are benefiting so much by the uh, association with Israel? Uh, you know, it's it's a history between, uh, first of all, the Israeli government and, and Gaza. From 1956, then uh, after 1967, then 1987, then 2000, the Israeli government's controlling the situation in Gaza. If they want to feed this yani, party or current, maybe I am in the media, I am against him, but I need him. So, so getting back to We don't to have you. also, we don't have, we don't have like a new leader in Gaza mm -hmm. can represent the voices of the majority of people. So Most of the most of the most of the people think just in Fatah and in Hamas and hope to find a new party. Sometimes the sometimes the Palestinians in Gaza trusted in Salam Fayyad. He was a primer of a, a minister, a minister of uh, finance, and then a prime minister, and also Muhammad Dahlan. Some maybe you will you hear or so about some names. But no, now that, that most of the Palestinians in Gaza, they are not trusting in, in, in anyone, including me. Including you, them. you not I'm trusting? Like them, not trusting anyone, yeah. Because yeah. everything happened. They killed us. They arrested us. Hamas or BA, we have nothing to do. And for me, it's one life. Because of that, I'm continuing my way, but at the same time, when I am going directly to the Israelis to tell them, let's do something for this conflict, not just to repeat what is happening already. I yeah. found some great partners, and I found yani, great models of peace uh, characters. Yeah. So 
getting back to your your story so you just simply you were you had your your Palestinian Youth Committee you were holding some online meetings with Israelis you had a huge 200 member Skype not just meeting. Israelis, not just Israelis, also uh, yeah, I'm connect a lot of people in Gaza with people right. in America, with people right. in Europe, with people okay. in the Middle East and North Africa. So and, you... and this will help me and find more participants in our idea. And and what were you discussing when you were holding your online meetings? Uh, what kind with, of things? Uh, locally, locally with 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 my friends in Gaza or with the people outside Gaza. What got you into trouble? <laughs> no, for because we are talking in 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 the yani we are talking with people outside Gaza to tell them that we are here. Right. To raise our voices, to create our meat. It's it's also happened with the Israelis to tell them don't trust just the media. We are not just a fighter. We are not just an extremist terrorist dreaming all the night how I will start my next day to kill an Israeli or to kill an, a Jew. It's not like that. Never. We are a normal community like any other community. And 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 so that got you in trouble with the leaders of Hamas. And the leaders of Hamas, the leaders of Hamas found in us, and in like we are a very effective group in Gaza. I received many calls about my next day, my next ideas, mm -hmm. how I am thinking, what kind of things I received from Abu Mazen or Majid Faraz. A lot of doubts were around me. Also, the Israelis, some Israelis, yeah, were thinking like I am a new model of Hamas guy. <laughs> Okay. Just to want to clean uh, Hamas reputation. So, what types of families allowed their kids to attend if they knew that Hamas wouldn't be happy? The families have nothing to do. Nothing to do in Gaza. They can't make money. They can't work. They can't. If you are a teenager or a graduate, for example, looking for a job. It's very hard to find a job. It's very high. It's very hard to just work. You will just get per day, sometimes 10 shekel, $3 per day, and it's hmm. nothing. Right. Of course, of course, we have a lot of associations in Gaza distributing humanitarian aid, some food, some milk, but we need also some associations feed the people with cultural aids, not mm -hmm. just food, food, food. Yeah. We need also new things can teach the, 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 the people there how they can build their lives financially. In Gaza Youth Committee, we are doing that. Telling the people how they can start their lives. If you need one hundred dollar, two hundred dollar to start a project, okay, we can help you on that. I'm using my network also to uh, solve some problems in Gaza. If they can donate and do something, and it's our way, I need to do that for the people in Gaza. Unless we, unless that, until now we are waiting to register our NGO. And we will register our NGO soon, maybe this year in 2023, and that will help us to cooperate with more NGOs, to cooperate with people in Gaza to build the Palestinian human. So the so you made the leaders mad, they arrested you, or you had to turn yourself in, and then they kept you in jail for eight months, right? Not eight months, it's 200 days, yeah. six months and a half. Oh, okay, well. It's... But if you want to count, if you want to count my time in the last 12 years, you can say one year. Oh, okay, so, <laughs> but, but 
when you were there, I had read that they tortured you. Is that true? Yeah. What does that mean? Everything. It means like raise your hand, arms up for hours. <laughs> Oi. Six, seven, eight hours for others. You can say 15 hours until you just lost yourself. Mm. Yeah. For, you can, for, yeah. for what purpose? Purpose that I am hiding a secret about my relations with the Israeli Mossad, the Israeli Shabak, the Israeli Mukhabarat. <laughs> So, so just they're trying to get you to confess to something? Yes. Most of them know Rami Aman very well and knows his family. And they know that Rami, he is a good guy. He's not a collaborator or he's not a spy. But yeah. a current inside them, he don't care about anything. He just think about the security. He just think about how I can find uh, all and forget all information from you using yani, all attitudes, like yes. like like sit in, in like and sit in one small chair chair for uh, six years old student small one for weeks in a big room and do nothing. Yeah, just wait, wait. I uh, covering. Uh, and they covered our eyes. You can say it was like a political uh, and a prison, a prison for uh, people from Daesh, people uh, thinking freely or thinking about making any kind of a change in economic and politics. Uh, for them, they know that I'm not just work or have Israeli relations. Also, I have a big movement, I have a good relations, and they want to tell me, you have no way, just work with us, just uh, say yes for everything, because I had uh, other kinds of meetings in the night, in the prison, in the, in the morning. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> so, so at night, you were able to do your activities Sitting in, uh, in a good chair give me a coffee allow me to smoke but not during the day yeah but it's just for one hour they called me from my room from my cell and in the jail just asking about uh, my vision my solutions for the people for uh, how i can solve the poverty in gaza how i can uh, make peace with israel how i can who would do that? The, the investigators there. I'm sorry, who? The investigators there. The investigators would ask you about that an hour. Yeah, a not good investigators, not bad investigators. Of course, they are messengers from big leaders in Hamas. So then they try to find out information about how you do your peace work. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. And and then they send you back to your cell to sit on a chair, a small chair. Yeah, like any prisoner, like any prisoner. Okay. They know they know Rami Aman. They know Rami Aman that, that I'm a, a public figure, you can say like I'm a public figure in Gaza. Okay, so is there anything else you wanna say about your time in prison? Uh it was a very bad yes, but for me it was like a movie. I'm saying that all the time for my friends. Uh, and that time I was thinking like in any moment they will release on me. Also, I was thinking about the the, the bad thing that I will stay here. You want to stay my, there? For, I, will, I will stay here in that jail. You wanted to? I was thinking won't? about that. I was thinking, I was thinking like that. Like they will release on me now, or they will never release on me. Uh, do, when, so, when the NGOs were fighting for you to be released, did you know about that? 
Yes, I yes, yes. I so listened. how how I did you how did you mom. find out? Oh, so my, your mom was able to talk to you sometimes? It happened in September, I think. It happened in September. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, they allowed us to speak to speak with our relatives uh, three times per week for mm. uh, nine minutes. Mm. And my mother told me like yesterday they spoke about you in the United Nations. I told her, oh yes, mom, please next uh, time uh -huh. ask my sister to come to our house and to open the video and I want to listen. Oh, uh huh. And yes, on that time on Wednesday, I think yeah, Wednesday before Friday. Yeah, Wednesday, I listened for uh -huh. that and I imagined the picture. Uh -huh. And for me, it was like, wow. But nobody knows what is happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was with the prisoners, uh, very happy in that time. I told them good things happen. Okay, everything working well. For me, that was enough. At least some people believe in you, raise your voice from a lot of uh, countries from all over the world. So Olmeb and uh, Helen and uh, Gerson and Ronnie, many, many, many people in yeah. that time, they were every time, uh, every day talking about my man. Maybe some of them, they... They don't out. They don't understand what is happening inside the jail. But inside yeah. the jail, like two kind of attitudes against Rami. Rami as a prisoner and Rami as an activist. Maybe he will be something big in the future. So let's know more about his brain. And they use everything to destroy me everything they use everything they use my friends they use uh, they took my phone they they they, they 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 distributed a very bad reputation about me for me like what my mother, like uh, i'm uh, asking people to just love israel uh, and don't think about uh, the Palestinian prisoners in the Israeli jails. Like Rami, he he, he don't uh, respect uh, the bloods of the martyrs. <laughs> For me, nothing to say. What happened to I your friends who were also detained with you? It's a good question. Uh, one of them she she's a girl she used this story to to find a solution for her and just the benefit from what is happening and i don't want to talk about that because she was a main part in in, in gaza youth committee and she is a daughter and she is uh, a daughter of uh, hamas uh, leader in hamas office in in egypt and turkey so she asked Yanni. Uh, she she decided to leave everything and just back to her family and use the Hamas securities to uh, find a solution for her. And then she traveled to Egypt, and from Egypt she what, traveled. What about your other friends? My other friends, you know, some uh, one friend, Abu Ahmad Imrad, they, they arrested him for three or four days. The mm -hmm. man, he was 50 years old in that time. He did yesterday, uh, last year, I'm sorry, last year, just because of nothing, Yanni. Uh, the other guys. I'm uh, sorry, did he died? Yeah, because of nothing. He just no. Date and, and I should remember him at, when at I'm 50, about... at 54 years. In that time, yeah, he was like 54 years, 54 years, yeah, 53 years. And he just just died from nothing. Yeah, he passed away. Mm -hmm. When you ask it, when you ask it me about who was <laughs> who was with me, he he was mm -hmm. one from the because he was in that meeting to talk mm -hmm. about 
the uh, workers in Gaza. He worked mm -hmm. in Israel in 18th and 19th, and in that meeting he was talk about uh, After the suffering you... of the uh, Gaza oh, workers. Uh, the first one. Anybody other else? Guys, other guys, they, they're still in Gaza. And I'm still in touch with them. They are with us. Uh, they believe in me. They supported me uh, inside the jail. Just this year left us, but the mm -hmm. other participants inside the jail. <laughs> So, they were, uh, with us, yeah. so after you were released, what what did you do? I started a new life, you can say. Rami as a person in that time, he's dead already. But Rami as an activist, I was feeling like I am the strong activist in that world. Uh, I called my close friends. I called my, also my, some from my, my relatives, and I started to think how I can fix everything. First of all, I was looking to find a relaxation for me, and also planning for the next level, and connect or make some connections with the people, like the NGOs who were in that video in the United Nations. Yes, I'm outside. The problem that uh, were you in Gaza? Like, when I was in Gaza, yeah, when that time. In that time, in October, in October, they released me. I told you, I received an invitation from New York University mm -hmm. to come in February 2021, and I, I tried, I tried to travel to Ares, mm -hmm. to Jerusalem and make the U.S. visa, but Hamas denied my traveling. I tried, tried, uh, and then made many brushes over uh, Hamas leaders through their offices, through their groups. If you will continue in denying my travel, I will talk about that in the media, and I will tell the audience that you denying me because I am a bad guy. If you, I am a, if I am a good guy, why you are uh, reject my traveling? And I will not uh, give you any kind of help, any kind of work. Nothing will happen with us. I'm not like other participants in my group who said yes for their offers and then it changed their promises with them. And no, I'm not like that. I'm from Gaza, and when I traveled from Gaza, my decision was from there that I will return to Gaza, but with more relations, with more partners, with more hopes, I made a very great initiative after my release. One bag, one hope, and it was a message for all that Gaza Youth Committee is still there, and Rami Aman is still there, and it, it's not just because of the name, we can't make any kind of name now, but Gaza Youth Committee, I think it, it, it was like a very good start for many Palestinians youth, and they are now in Europe, in Israel, in Gaza, in West Bank, <coughs> in Middle East and North Africa. Some from them, working for themselves because the main idea for us how we can build ourselves as decision makers to create more characters from us not so, use these relations for us we need to help the people we need to back to gaza we need to make peace in gaza not to travel to to to, to stay outside and make peace through online <laughs> So, but today you don't live in Gaza, right? Yeah, I'm in Cairo, but for me already, I know Cairo very well. I'm near to uh, Gaza, just 500 kilometers, following Gaza every day. Most of my calls, most of my calls daily with Gazans uh, have a lot of initiatives and the plans with the Egyptians here through their foundations, associations. Also, I am in touch with the Ministry of Youth and Sports, and I will start 
uh, a project with them in 2023. And this project under the owners of Abdel Fattah Sisi. So I'm not here, not here just to, 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 to leave Gaza with nothing. No, I'm, I'm, add, I'm adding to our relations. I'm in touch with you. I'm talking with the people. And also my message for all that it's not just peace between Israelis and Palestinians. It's peace for all. The main idea was to Skype with your enemy to invite people, or invite enemies to speak, invite enemies to understand each other, and then think about your hope. And I hope that 2023 will be a year for creating more hopes a sky with your enemy initiative wasn't for just Palestinians and Israelis. It's for all enemies to invite mm -hmm. them to speak with, with each other, to listen to each other. Mm -hmm. At least they will see they will see that they are humans. So why is it that you don't live in Gaza and that you live in Egypt? It's it's very hard to me to live in Gaza. After my time in the jail, uh, I need to enter a new movie. <laughs> Everything reminds me there with many things. And as a person, it's very hard. Yes, if I am thinking like a leader or an activist, I should give ad help people every day and give advices and talk in a positive way, but inside myself, I'm not like that. I'm tiring, I'm really tired, I'm really tired, I'm really tired, and I'm working for something for all, not mm -hmm. for army. When, I'm, when we are organized some initiative for workshops for, for the kids, and for the teenagers or the students, we are talking with them about to create new hobbies, thinking mm -hmm. about the artists, musicians, writers. We and we succeed in that. We succeed in. I have a very, uh, I have a lot of success stories that changed a lot of minds between Israelis and Palestinians. How how many people do you think want peace in Gaza? Most of them. Most of them. Yeah. The rest don't want peace because they are benefited from what is happening. And 75% of the population in Gaza is under 25. How come? Under 25? The Gazans marrying every day, thinking about the creative families. If it's the cultural ideas in Gaza, in Gaza for any graduate, for example, he should marry and find a girl and your father, he will help, he will help, her, he will help him. And all of them will, will create more boys and more girls and you will find a lot of youngest people. You can find a father, 30, and his son, 15 or 16, 13. Do you, do you have the same, I know with the Palestinians, they have uh, because they they have a lot of marriage with family members, that there are uh, birth defect type issues. Do you have that as no, well? No, not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. Well, that's not good. A lot. Not that's a good because that that could be a obviously a, a, a bad problem that uh, I've yes. I've heard of. So, what is it that you'd like to see happen in Gaza? To find people. To see people fight for their rights, to be more brave when they talk about their dreams and their goals, to think about themselves, not think about others. And I want to see also theaters and good associations in Gaza, good centers for uh, sports and art. We are work for we are working for that goal, to, for this goal. Yeah. To find the corporations that can help us in. And build some good things in in, in in Gaza Strip can help the people financially and personally. Because I want to see him as a leader in his house, on his street, to let him also understand the Christian and then the Jew, yeah, and also the Jew. Do you think it will happen? Yes, but we need the Christians. <laughs> 
to involve in these activities. We have now 1,000 Christians in Gaza with three or four churches. Some of them, our initiatives about organize the delegations to visit the mosques and the church to let the Christians and the Muslims you know, work with each other. We don't have any kind of you know, bad issues in, in that. But it's good to have interfaith dialogue sometimes mm -hmm. and invite the uh, Jewish also. Do you want to go back to Gaza? Yes. Someday? As soon as possible. You, I hope, you, you I miss hope it? tonight. Yeah. Yes, I miss, I miss my mother. I miss my house. I miss my friends. Uh, I miss everything in Gaza. And uh, I will return to Gaza soon. Not well, forever. To build a new things to push some, initi some new initiative to build again my association and then continue my journey. <laughs> well, it was such a pleasure to talk to you. I really appreciate it. Next week, we'll be taking a lighter tone regarding peace work and speaking with an old friend of ours, Lior Eisenberg, a chest for all and chest for solidarity. Given the reality of the uptick in violence lately from both sides and around the world, I think we all could use a reprieve and let's talk about much friendlier competitions. As I've said many times, peace is worked on from many different angles. We originally spoke with Lior two years ago. Lior is a Jewish Israeli who has a very unique way of working on peace between Israelis and other countries by holding chess competitions. That's right, bridging the gap of understanding while enjoying a friendly game of chess. Lior has put together chess tournaments for years, with competitions internationally in the United States, with Arab countries. And when the Abraham Accords were signed, he soon held competitions between Israelis, Morocco, and the Sudan. He gained acclaim when he challenged Saudi Arabia during the World Chess Championships after Israel had been boycotted from playing for 32 years. It is an interesting story that you'll want to hear. In the last couple of years, he's expanded his reach even further, and you won't want to miss what's been happening between the Israeli competitors and so many new and interesting countries. We hope you'll join us, and for now... We pray that everyone will someday live in peace, shalom, and salam.